بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear sisters and brothers, السلام عليكم It is the last night of the talks Tomorrow we will have a Q&A but the talks are coming to an end and so I wanted to th um, take this opportunity to thank two groups of people. The first, the beautiful people from Shabab Septain who have been making so many efforts to make these events possible in so many different ways. The people behind cameras, the people audios, the people downstairs taking the names, everyone. So please join me in reciting a salawat for them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you so much to every single one of you. Without you, it wouldn't have been possible. And in so many ways, they've been very nice to me. The, every single one of them. There's a brother, for example, downstairs registering the name. As soon as I come into the center, I see him with his beautiful smile. It's like I've given all the energy in the world. So I really thank every single one of you. And my second thanks goes also to every single one of you who came tonight and the previous nights and the people at home watching. Thank you so much. May Allah, inshallah, bless you and give you from the best fruits of these nights. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Yesterday, if you've been following, we spoke about this idea that a lot of the suffering we experience in the world is because of something inside ourselves, And if we begin to change that, then the way we look at the world changes. We start to see the beauties which are there in the world. And I know that's not easy. I said it myself, that we may be at a place, most of us are, in which everything inside us tells us and make us feel like this is not a beautiful world, that there is so much wrong with it. So from where we are, that's how it feels. But the past few nights we've been talking about this idea that it is possible if we change something inside that we look at the same world and we see it differently. We'll see more beauty in it. We'll see more meaning in it. There would be meaning behind the pain we're going through, behind the pain in the world. And then we will see that everything that's happening to us is out of love. Every single person who came to our life, every single person who left our life. At one point, we said we will see how all of that was for our own benefit. Not now, but at some point. And we said we are going to trust and rely on subhanallah, the idea that God is saying, I will never do anything bad to you. I will never want to harm you. We're going to rely on this, take this on trust, hoping one day we'll look and see. And that was yesterday's discussion. Now, someone may say, Sheikh, okay, fair enough. I'll try to get to a place where I can look at this world and even behind its difficulties and pain, see beauty. Even behind the suffering, see some meaning, see that it's for my own growth. Okay, I get that. But does that mean that we should allow all of these pain and suffering to go on? Like, are you telling us that we shouldn't do anything about the pain in the world, the suffering in the world, all the changes inside? What about the things outside? So the killings, this, the loneliness, the depressions, the anxieties, all of that. We, other people are suffering. You're saying we should just change inside and look at people suffering and be like, oh, well, I can see beauty behind that. So now I'm going to be saying that no, not at all. And it's a little bit tricky, but I'm sure if you pay attention, I can make this clear what I'm trying to say. In no way am I suggesting that we are doing the inner change and then we ignore what's happening in the world. No. What I'm saying is this, that if we don't do the inner work, if we don't heal inside, 
we cannot be that useful even when we try to fix the outside world. And I want to say that in two levels, our inner work is even required for us to decrease the suffering in the world. Okay? So, what happens is this. Right now, we are trying to do things in the world. A lot of it is just so that we don't feel that awful. So that we don't feel anxiety. So that we don't get triggered. And parts of it is, no, sincerely to make the world a better place. I'm saying, let's, for that part of it, which is for our own self, let go of that. Instead of that, work inside, and then when you want to go and change the world, you'll have much more energy. This may be a little bit difficult to understand, so I'm gonna give you an example from my own life. It's a personal story. See, a few years ago, I had made this decision that I feel like the, the way I can help the world to decrease the suffering in the world is through knowledge, through learning and sharing that knowledge with people. And it was so important for me, like I felt this is my duty, that even when my studies in Cambridge finished, I got my PhD, even though I had so many jobs offer, my wife and I, we decided we're gonna let go of that I want to focus on my, study, on my own readings because that's how I want to help the world, through knowledge, through helping people heal. So this went on and we were renting a house. We still are. One day, the landlord came. The landlord came and started complaining about the state of the garden. And I had even tried to make the garden nice. We get a gardener every month who comes and cleans the garden. But despite that, she came in, she was so angry. She was so rude to me in front of my family, it really hurt me. It really hurt me. She attacked us and I felt so terrible inside. And for two months, I couldn't even look at our garden. Every time I looked at the garden, I would remember the way she treated me in front of my family, in front of my wife, my dad. It was very embarrassing for me. And so at that point, imagine, this pain was inside me. That, ooh, the landlord came, embarrassed me, and I don't know how to deal with this. And so I slowly, slowly felt certain urges inside me. Well, you know what? Maybe forget about all those learning. Who cares about giving lectures? Let's go back, take those jobs. The money's much more. We'll buy a house, we'll never have a landlord, right? Why should this happen to me? Why should I give the permission to someone and come treat me like this? Forget about this. I'll let go of the whole lecturing thing. Well, I'll do it on the side. I'll go take the job offers I had. I'll gain more money. I'll buy a house. No landlord would ever get to speak to me like this. What was happening at this very moment inside me is what happens to most of us. We feel something inside and the way we want to fix it, the way we want to heal it, this thing that we're feeling inside, is let me change the external world. What was the problem? All that I didn't want to happen was I just didn't want to feel that way. I didn't want to feel embarrassed. I didn't want to feel that powerless. I didn't want to feel like someone can talk to me like that and make me feel scared for two months. I'm telling you, I couldn't look at our own garden because as soon as I looked at the garden, it would bring all these fears of that the landlord would come again and judge us for it. So, but instead of at that point thinking, now I need to work inside and remove this insecurity, learn how to stand up for myself, learn how to talk and defend myself and say, no, we've had, learn how to heal this. Instead of that, I was thinking, oh, I need to get so rich, buy a house, so that this never happens. You see, we have a problem inside, but instead of thinking that I need to go inside and heal this, fix this, we want to spend a lot of our life, even go against some of our really important goals and principles, like living lectures, was so important for me. But at some point, at some point, the pain inside gets so difficult that we're willing to let go of that 
and make changes, live in life in a way that we don't feel that pain inside. So, if we don't realize that the ultimate way not to feel any pain is to heal yourself, we're going to be spending so much of our energy in life to change the external world in ways to avoid these things that trigger us. Imagine, instead of, for example, me working on my insecurities, on how to stand up for myself, on how to defend myself against the landlord, instead of fixing this, I was thinking, okay, let's for five, 10 years do something which I don't even love just to avoid this, as if that's even gonna solve the problem. Okay, you bought your house. You think you're not gonna get into an argument with the neighbor or with someone at work? If you want to fix the problem in the outside world, it, 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 the triggers will never end. Okay, now you don't have a landlord, but who said you're not gonna have a problem with your boss at work? As long as that insecurity is inside me, as long as I haven't learned how to stand up for myself, I'll be wasting all of my life trying to change my life in a way that I don't get triggered, but triggers are always there. Because the world is even designed in a way so that it triggers us so that we go and heal. The world is like a clinic. So, what am I trying to say tonight is that as long as we haven't taken this work to heal ourselves, most of our energy in life is not there to help people. It's just there so that our own insecurities, our own pain is not triggered. Most of our energy is just spent on avoiding our own problems. Okay? Please recite the salawat. And then we feel like, why is it that I don't enjoy life? Why is it that I can't have a sense of purpose? Because you're not even spending energy on your purpose. All your life efforts are ways to avoid your problems. All we're doing in life is how to make sure I never get triggered. I never feel insecure, I never feel embarrassed, I never feel lonely. So our whole energy is in avoiding problems. We don't even have time to do what we've come to this world to do. And now imagine, if at that moment my wife hadn't supported me, she'd pushed me to that side, said, yeah, you're right. We don't want this to happen. Why should our landlord embarrass us? Forget about lecturing. Let's go back to work. Imagine what would have happened. Even tonight, the whole lecture series, it would have never happened because I wouldn't be a sheikh anymore. Right? And I'm not saying everyone should be a sheikh. No, everyone has to be a different thing. We need doctors, lawyers, whatever. But me, in this way that I've been doing these lecture series, if my wife hadn't supported me, pushed me towards my purpose, it wouldn't have happened. So all these people who are messaging me the past few nights, they're saying, Sheikh, I'm going through a very difficult time. I've, I've been experiencing a loss. I'm experiencing this, that. And your lecture has calmed us. At least for a few nights, we feel like it's easier to tolerate the pain. If I hadn't gone this way, all of those comfort that the people had wouldn't be here. So every time we decide, instead of following on purpose, to go towards the world to avoid our problems, it means that the purpose we were meant to do is left undone and leads to real suffering for people. The things that we were meant to do in this world, God sent us to do in this world, we won't do them, and that leads to real suffering for people. It leaves a gap in the world. Imagine any, for example, thing that helped you in life. Well, if these lecture series helped your life, these could easily have not been there because I was so scared. I was insecure. And if my family hadn't helped me, that the way to deal with that is to go inside and deal with that insecurity, we wouldn't have this. And now imagine for a second, how many things in the world we could have had, how many lectures, how many charities, how many beautiful things, how many beautiful doctors, how many beautiful treatments for cancer, how many beautiful books, so many things we could have had if we had learned all of us to follow our purpose instead of using our life to avoid our problems. And it's a decision we're making at every second that in order to feel good, should I go inside and fix it or should I change the outside world? And 
Let me tell you how that thing worked out. We started learning gardening. We didn't get a gardener. We did the gardening ourselves, and in one month, everyone was saying, your garden is the best. The landlord came in, loved it so much, we started having a very good relationship, and it's for two years now that we're even friends with the landlord. A situation I was extremely scared of and wanted to avoid turned out to lead to a friendship between us and the landlord. And on top of that, now we have so much confidence because our garden is the best one, at least in Luton. Muhammad. Let me read a line for you from Dua Arafe of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein says in Dua Arafe, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم إني أرقب إليك وأشهد بالربوبية لك مغرا بأنك ربي وابتدأتني بنعمتك قبل أن أكون شيئا مذكورا قد I want to ashhad, I want to testify that you're my Lord and that you started giving your blessings to me before I even had a name, before I even was created. God started loving us before we were even created. Now it's the next line I, I want it for our lecture. وخلقتني من التراب ثم اسكنتني الاصلاب امنا لريب المنون واختلاف الدهور والسنين فلم ازل ضائنا من صلب الى رحم في تقادم من الايام الماضيه والقرون الخالية لم تخرجني لرأفتك بي ولطفك لي وإحسانك إلي It's saying God You started loving me before I was even created And then once I was created You didn't bring me to this world No you kept me, you saved me from this person to another person. Rulers came and went, history was going ahead. You kept me inside, you didn't bring me to this world, why? Because you were waiting for the right time for me to be born. Think about it. You brought me to this world just at that time in history of humanity where I could shine the most. What is he saying? Every single one of us has a duty and purpose to fulfill in this world. And it's not an accident where we are born, who we are born into. Imam Hussein is saying God waited for every single one of us for the right time for us so that then we could come to this world and do that duty that we're meant to do. Imam Sajjad. Allahumma sta'amilni fi ma khalaqtani lah. God, use me for that thing which you have created me for. What does that mean? Two things. First of all, every single one of us have a specific role to play in this world. And at the same time, it means that every single one of us, we have a high chance of, instead of doing that, waste our whole life avoiding our problems, avoiding the feelings inside. And then once you go that way, there is no satisfaction. Life has no meaning. Your whole life becomes a series of ways of avoiding difficult situations. Life is not meaningful. You have no purpose. You have no meaning. So that's what I'm saying. Let's create the inner change. Let's make sure once you're in the world, you're not avoiding any problem. You're not there to fix, to avoid a trigger. You've done that already so that when you go in the world, you're only there to help. You're only there to do that thing which you were meant to do. 
So if the world right now is in this, in this situation, part of it is because we haven't done our inner work. So when we go out in the world, we can't help it. Because most of our energy is spent just avoiding our own problems. Not feeling scared, not feeling anxious, not feeling depressed. We haven't spent the energy and time to work on that. And of course, part of it is also we need support and help how to do that. So let me then give you an example. You know, a lot of the times, for example, we watch the news and it shows us, again, one of the countries who are suffering. A lot of the times we even find it so difficult we change the channel because the pain is too much. See, if you're not healed, if you're scared, if there is so much on your mind, even when the world shouts at you, I need help, you change the channel because too much to take. And of course, if we don't do the inner healing work, we can't be that much useful for the world. So, tonight, I want to take us on a journey, and I have very limited time, so I need to rush a little bit. But I want to use Imam Sajjad's help to take us on a journey, and through this, a few words I'm hoping would become clear to us. One of them is Tawbah, one of them is Eta'at of God, one of them is Bismillah, a few of these words, I want to talk to you about them in a way that we'll see all this time we've got it wrong. At least we haven't understood the depth of it. Let's say tonight you have felt this idea. And I'm hoping for six nights I've tried to tell you that the, prob the solution to most of your problems is inside you. Fix this thing inside, heal yourself. Then from a place in which you are not scared, then interact with the world. Don't interact with the world to avoid your problems. Now let's say you're convinced of this. You're like, yes, that's true. All my life I've been trying to avoid my problems and all of that. This is the stage Imam Sajjad calls Tawbe. Tawbe, the meaning that, oh, I made a sin, I want to repent, that's a very low interpretation of it. Imam Sajjad says Tawbe, the highest meaning of it is, you know what? When you realize I could have done with my life so much more than I'm doing right now. When you realize that with my life I could have helped so many people. I could have been there for so many people. Give support to so many people. But because I hadn't done my inner healing, I didn't even have the energy. I was spending most of my life trying to take care of myself. And obviously... When inside there's so much pain that has not been healed, obviously you can't be the world, be in the world the person you're meant to be. So Tobe is this. Oh my God, I could have been that and I'm this. And then this is what Imam Sajjad refers to in Munajat al-Ta'ibin. He says this is what Tobe is. Ilahi, albasatni al-khataya thawba madhallati. وجللني التباعد منك لباس مسكنتي وأمات قلبي عظيم جنايتي فأحيح بتوبة منك يا أملي وبغيتي إلهي ذلل على ذنوبي غمام رحمتك وأرسل على عيوبي سحاب رأفتك Mom is saying God I have so much things inside fears, insecurities, addictions, shortcomings that I haven't healed that they've created this situation for me that I feel far from you, I'm in pain, I feel suffocated in this life, I'm not who I'm meant to be. This is Tobe. When you start realizing that you could be much more than you are. What's the next stage? We, this is, by the way, from Munajat Khamse Ashar. The first one is Munajat Ta'ibin. The second one is Munajat Shakin. What happens in Munajat al-Shakin? The person realizes I want to be much more. I don't want to go in the world to fix my own problems. I don't want to work 10, 15 years just so I can buy a house so the landlord doesn't come. No. I want to heal myself so that when I go into the world, it's not for myself, it's to help people. You want to do that, what happens? You want to start doing that, fears come. The patterns you've created come. Your insecurities come. Your addictions come. Your doubts come. It's not easy. So in Munajat al-Shakin, we reach this place 
الهی الهی که اشکو نفسن به سوء اماره و الی الخطیعت مبادره و به معاصی که مولعه God I want to go in the world to help but I have so many fears myself that keep stopping me I want to fly I want to let go I want to do the inner healing and be in the world but it's not easy The patterns keep coming, my insecurities keep coming, and they make me do previous things. They make me want to live for myself, this lower self. They order me to do the previous things, the previous patterns. And sometimes it's not just that they order me. No. Sometimes I want to go in the world and be there for other people, but there's part of me that trace me back. I want to be nice to someone, my anger comes back, my fear comes back. So in this stage, Imam Sajjad says, the person has realized they could be so much more. They want to go towards it, they see there's so much inside them that's taking them back. The person wants to fly, the person wants to heal, but there's so much weight holding them down. The fears, the insecurities, the doubts, the resentments, the anger, the pain that we haven't managed to heal. And by the way, please don't think that I'm forcing any of this on you. These are stages that inshallah naturally should happen to us, right? Inshallah naturally at one point in life we really feel that there's more to us. I've been trying to convince us that there's more, but it's okay. I'm saying I'm not forcing any of this on you. Imam Sajjad says these are naturally should meant to happen. So at one point we realize there's more to us, we want to become like that. But then our insecurities hold us down. It could be even in the smallest cases, even in the smallest things. Like for example, your child has an issue at school and you want to be there for your child. You want to go and speak to the teacher, but you're shy. You're shy. You feel scared of going to talk to the head teacher. I'm saying even in smallest things, we want to be there for people, but something inside us could, you know, could make it harder for us. It could be that I'm shy to stand up for my child. Or it could be, I don't know. So there are so many ways in which we need help. We need healing. And in this Munajat al-Shakir, we go to God and say, God, help us. It's not easy. Then in Munajat al the person, once they've been a little bit, you know, they've tried to heal themselves. They've tried to go through depression and heal. They've tried to go through anxiety and addiction, anger, resentment, whatever you're dealing with. You've kept trying to fight it. You've kept trying to heal it. It doesn't work. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you've tried. It doesn't work. So the person gets scared. And this is Imam Sajjad saying a stage that we all may go through. But well, I want to let go. I want to be there for people. Believe me, I've had friends, family members as well, family, say, larger family, who said, when my grandma died, they were saying, I wanted to be there for everyone else. But the pain was so much, I couldn't, I stayed home, I didn't attend the funeral. Do you see in how many ways we want to be there in the world, help people, but things inside us hold us back? And there's no judgment, no one has helped us. Well, grandma died, it's difficult. How can I be out there helping my aunt? Whoever helped me, how to deal with that pain, right? So I'm saying in so many ways, the things we haven't healed stop us from being there for people, making the world a better place. So, in Monajat al the person reaches this stage, I've been trying 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. I can't do it. Why was I even born? Did my mother give birth to me so I come here and just suffer in pain and fear? That's my whole life. I wish I wasn't even born. What can I do? I've tried everything. I can't heal. I'm the same person I was. So Imam Sajjad says, a person will naturally this get to this stage. Imam Sajjad, what's the way out? What's your suggestion? We go to Munajat al-Rajin. Ya man idha sa'alahu abdun a'atah wa idha ammala ma indahu ballagahu munah wa idha aqbala alayhi qarrabahu adnah Saying, see, all this time you were so focused on fixing your life through fixing the external world. 
And then you said, okay, I don't want to do that. I want to heal the, myself first. But even then, Imam Sajjad is saying, beautiful soul, even when you wanted to heal yourself, you forgot something. Your old focus became your own shortcomings, your insecurities, your fears, your pain, your addictions. And of course, if you look at all of that, it's going to be so difficult. You, and now look at God. So Imam is saying, see, look, think of your nafs like a child holding a knife. Have you ever seen a two-year-old, for example, holding a knife? Everyone gets scared? Like, put the knife down, put the knife down. We're like that to our nafs. We're telling our nafs, put the addictions down. Don't get attached to the world. Don't get attached to this person. Don't have fear. Don't be scared. Don't be insecure. Don't have addiction. And what do children usually do when they're holding a knife if you tell them, let it go? They'll hold it and they run. Right? Obviously. When you tell someone to let go of something that's exciting for them, giving them joy, pleasure, if you tell them let go, they're going to take it and run, which is what's happening to us. We keep telling our nafs, let go, Dike. How long do you want to be attached to people? How long do you want to be attached to this? How long do you want to be scared? How long do you want to be fear? And your nafs doesn't have anything else. So even, so your nafs is holding on to these things so hard. And you keep telling it, let go. So even for a few days, it tries to let go, but it falls back. Why? Because where else can it get energy from? You're getting energy, for example, from overeating. Hope you're telling your nafs not to do that. What else should it do? What else are you giving yourself? Your prayer is not giving you energy. Your fasting is not giving you energy. What should your nafs do? What else have you given to it? Imam Sajjad says, if you want your nafs to let go of it, give it something it loves more. What is that? God. It says, slowly, slowly, start showing your nafs, teaching your nafs the beauty of God so that it sees something more beautiful, it lets go. How do you take the knife away from a child? You give it a better toy. And when you want to do this with your nafs, you can't tell it that, oh, God is loving, God is beautiful. And your nafs will be like, all right, okay. No, you have to show your nafs the beauty of love, of God. You can't tell it. You have to show it. That's why none of us were going towards God. We've never felt the beauty of his love. We've never felt loved. Imam Ali Munajat Shabani, what did he say yesterday? Ilahi lam yakun li hawlun fa'antaqila bihi an ma'asiyyatik. I have no strength by which to get rid of my shortcomings unless illa fi waqtin ay ghathani li mahabbatik. I need to give my nafs something that it loves more than these things which I'm holding on to to feel a little bit calm in this world of separation, isolation, and pain. So as long as you haven't felt loved by God, Imam Sajjad is saying, we're never going to be able to heal. How can we feel that love? Where is that love? Then we go to Munajat al-Raghibin. Ilahi, in kana kalla zadi fil masir ilayka, falagad hasun al dhani bit tawakul ilayk. Wa in kana jormi kad akhafani min ugumatik, fa in rajai kad asharani bil amni min nikmatik. Imam is saying, now that you want to go towards God, now that you want to feel His love, don't make a mistake. Don't rely on your own actions. Let go of that idea. Whatever we do is so little. No, forget about that. Focus on something else. If you want to feel loved by God, if you want to love God, don't rely on your own actions. Allah will talk about what's the outcome of that actions. I'm not saying let go of them. I'm saying let go of them for this purpose. For another purpose, we need them. But the only thing, see, start focusing on God's rahmah and God's mercy. And in so many ways, Imam speaks about this. Because what Imam Sajjad is trying to do is see the only way you can feel loved by God is that you slowly, slowly start planting seeds in the garden of your heart. You can never force yourself to love God. 
And I can never tell you to love God. That's meaningless. Who can ever force love? Love should come naturally. So how does Imam Sajjad try to make you fall in love with God? He says, see, I'm going to give you small things. Hold them here and take care of them. Like small seeds that you plant in a garden. And water them. Every day come back to them. Pay attention to them. Maybe slowly, slowly, out of these love you will feel a little bit love for God. What are some of these things? It's so beautiful. Imam is saying, do you know that every time you thought about God, God was thinking about you before that? All this time, didn't everyone tell you, remember God, remember God, remember God? Vikr, vikr, vikr. Imam Sajjad says something else. He said, do you know every time you remembered God, they tell you, God was before that thinking about you? Do you know even when you weren't thinking about him, he was thinking about you? So you never forgot about me. Imam Sajjad says, do you know when you didn't pay attention to him? You even went against what he said, he still loved you. Do you know that all those days when you were not thinking about him, all those days when you weren't even thinking about him, you didn't even care about him, he loved you. So slowly, slowly, he wants to plant these seeds in us to tell you that you're so special, God loves you so much, whether you think about him or not, he's thinking about you. There is a reality in this tough world that has our back. That never stopped loving us. Ya dal ma'roof alladhi la yanqata wa abada. Imam Hussein Dua Arafa. Imam Sajjad is saying keep these things inside you. Slowly, slowly, maybe out of this you would feel that there's a reality in this world that loves you. Never stop loving you no matter what you did. And everything that happened, he was trying there to help you. Now, even this cannot force love on you if, you're not, if you don't want it to. But, it, but at least it may, if you hold on to it. If you keep reading these lines, that there's a reality in this world that even when you don't think about it, thinks about you. Okay, let's say what happens when slowly, slowly you planted these seeds and it started giving fruits. By the way, I'm not saying you have to feel this way now. Please don't get me wrong. Inshallah, one day you'll get there. I'm just trying to tell you what kind of ways of living in this world is possible. I'm not, exposed, I'm not uh, forcing anything on you. That it's never going to work. Religion cannot work with force. Once you start connecting to that reality, once you start feeling God's loving hand behind everything that happened to you, then what happens is that you slowly, slowly start seeing more beauties in the world. Before that, all your life, we were just trying to take care of yourself in a world in which the maximum people that cared about you were your friends and family. You felt isolated, you felt alone, you were scared. You had to provide for your family, you had to be there for your children, you had to be there for your mother. It was you against the world. Even sometimes your husband didn't get you, your wife didn't get you, your mom didn't get you. It's tough. You against the world. With so much pain you can't carry. But at some point you start seeing that you're not alone. From inside you there's a reality that speaks to you that says I've got your back. And once you start feeling that, again I'm saying I'm not forcing this on you, one day you'll get there. Once you start feeling that, you look at the world and it changes. The world seems different. You start seeing his loving hand, you look back, you see, oh, that person I so wanted to be with, and it didn't work out. Oh my God, how it worked out for the better, or this or that. And you start seeing more of his beauty. So what happens? Munajatu shakirin. Ilahi. أذهلني عن إقامة شكرك تتاب أطولك وعجزني أن إحصاء ثنائك فيض فضلك وشغلني عن ذكر محامدك ترادف عوائدك وعياني عن نشر عوارفك تحوالي أياديك إلهي تصاغر عند تعظم آلائك الشكري شكر that they told us to do say شكرا لله achieves nothing 
As long as the world looks ugly to you, what's the point of saying shuk? You say shuk for what? For an ugly world? Imam Sajjad is saying shuk happens when you've done the interchange. You look at the world, you see God's love, you see beauty, and you say shukran lillah. Shuk is a stage. It's not something you can force on yourself. As long as you feel world is painful, world is difficult, what are you saying shuk for? And this is unfortunately a mistake we're making. We're forcing shuk on ourselves when our nafs is not ready. So our nafs doesn't like it. You go to someone and say, life is difficult. Just don't be ungrateful. So they force you to be a hypocrite. I'm not happy with it, but I have to say it's beautiful. I have to thank someone for it. Imam Sajjah is saying you can't force yourself to be shakir. You have to do the healing work first. You'll get to a place. You look at the world. You see it's beautiful. Naturally, you would be shakir. You don't need to force it on yourself. You will see that there's a reality there that's had your back all this time. That as Imam Hussein says in Du'a Arafi, before you were even born, I wasn't even in this world, you started loving me. You waited for the right time for me to come to this world. And when I was born, you put the love of me in the heart of my caretaker. You made me cute so they look after me. Imam, said, Imam Hussein is saying in Du'a Arafi, once you feel this, then you know you're no longer alone in this world. Once you feel this, naturally you would be shocked here. And at this stage, Imam Sajjad is saying, you see so much love and beauty. You're like, God, what's the point of shock? Because one after the other, I see your love. It's possible to live like this in the world. If we focus on inner change, this could be our life. Imam Ali said, alayhi salam. Imam Ali said, men should always have this loving and energy. Da'iman nishato. Ba'idan kasal. Your neshat, your energy should always be there. It's possible to live like that if we focus on that inner change. Munajat was shakirin, that was. In Munajat, Khamsa Ashar by Imam Sajjad. Okay, let's say you started looking at the world this way. You saw God's hand everywhere. That God is taking care of you. What happens after that? It's so beautiful. Finally, you let go of something. Finally, once your heart is sure that God has been taking care of you all those years, you let go of trying to take care of yourself. You say, God, you're doing a much better job of that than me. But you have to get there. I can't force this on you. I'm not telling you to be like this tonight. No. You have to first feel love, see beauty. Then at a stage you reach... You know, like sometimes as children, we're going against our parents. Oh, you, you don't like me, you don't like me. And then we got older, we look back. Oh my God, when my dad told me to do that, he had my... So you become like that with God. You see, oh my God, all these years I was trying to take care of myself. And sometimes I even made things worse. That's when I fell in love by God, with God, by the way, personally. Ten years in my personal life, ten years I was trying to get something. And sometimes I even went against the things which I knew were right to bring it closer for myself. And do you know when I fell in love with God, when that thing which I so wanted didn't work out, I looked back and I saw every single thing I did to bring it closer had only made it further away from me. And I cried so hard. And I said, God, I went against you to bring it closer. I thought you don't want me to be happy. And now I look back, I don't have it anymore. And I see that all the things I did to bring it closer were the things that made it farther and farther away. But I cannot force this on you. You have to feel it in your life. Me, 10 years, I didn't see it. it took me 10 years to get there. So, what happens afterward in Munajat al My time is finishing in one minute. If it's okay, please give me two, three more minutes so I can finish this. I, I thank everyone and I apologize. I should have finished this. My shortcoming. In Munajat al in Imam Sajjat says, Khub, after this, what happens? Once you finally see that God wants the best for you, God wants you to be happy, God doesn't want you to be scared, God wants whatever you want, what happens? You let go. You let go, and it's the nicest thing in the world. Imagine all the nights when your head was on the pillow and you were thinking how to take care of yourself tomorrow. 
or how to deal with the pressure of tomorrow? You know why? Because you didn't know there's someone for you there. But once you start feeling that, you let go of all of that naturally. Because you know all the love, all the, everything you need is there inside already. And then what happens? Then you start going back to the world, but no longer to take care of yourself. To be an agent of God in the world. Because for you, you're taken care of. And it's from that point onwards that eta'at begins. Imam Sajjad, you know what is muti'in, eta'at? It says once you reach that stage where all that you want is taken care of and you trust this reality, you trust its better judgment, then you're like, okay, you know what? You tell me what to do. You tell me what to do. Eta'at before that is not real. It's forced on you. You have to see, you have to feel that he loves you. Then the natural result of that is, oh, you tell me what to do. You tell me what I should do in this world. I want to be the agent of you, the agent of your love. Use me. Spend all of my energy for what you want from me. But you can only say this to God when? After you feel his love, after you feel that he has your best interest at heart. So that's why if your child doesn't feel that way, you can't force it on him or her. She's just going to hate it. What happens afterwards is so beautiful. Imam says, then once all of your needs are taken care of, then you go into the world as a different person. المصارعين إلى الخيرات والعاملين للباقيات الصالحات your needs are all taken care of. You go into the world just to help. Just to help. Believe me, we're not there. You know, we have so many things inside, so many issues inside, that even when we see a problem in the world, we can't fix, we don't do it. You know, sometimes I feel like religion, the way it's been taught to us, has normalized inner issues, inner problems. See, every time I pass a homeless person, I feel like if I didn't have inner issues, this problem wouldn't have been there. Every homeless person in the London, in London, we have enough money to get rid of that. But none of us were spending that much. Just most of us were not. God says in the Quran, as long as you don't feel you're taken care of, you want to take care of yourself, you hold on to your things. Imam Hassan al Mujtaba, in his life, they say three, five, or seven times, he gave half of his wealth, all of his wealth. But we can't. Because we still don't know there's someone taking care of us. We don't even give 2% of us. And sometimes in religion, they normalize this. Last year, I was in a lecture, Q&A. Someone asked the sheikh, sheikh, I'm so well off. I'm giving my homes more than that. Should I give? The sheikh said, no, that's beautiful. Saying Imam Hassan, uh, Imam Ali, us. But again, you can't force yourself to give. I'm telling you, I go against the homeless person. At that very moment, I can sell my car and make his life better. Why don't I do that? Why? Because I'm not sure God is taking care of me. That's what I'm telling. Theology, religion, as long as it's in your head, it's useless. It doesn't work. Oh, God is the razak. Oh, yes, yeah, show me when you're passing a person. Why are you not selling your car? Get a lower car. Why are you so much saving? Me, myself, I'm not selling you. As long as I don't feel God is taking care of me, in the Quran says, even if we give you khaza'in rahmatik, you wouldn't give khashatalim. God says, even if I give you everything I have, you won't let it go. As long as you haven't healed inside, as long as you don't, I'm going to take care of yourself. I'm telling myself, religion, as long as it's here, it's useless. God is razak. As long as you don't feel it, you're not going to give. Khop, I'm going to finish. What happens after you become God's agent in the world? After you've really felt like God's got your back, God's going to take care of you. All your life becomes this. All your life becomes giving. And then once you live like this, it's so beautiful. God is saying, I put you as the God on earth. Khalifa of God on earth. You start feeling that way. And life becomes so meaningful and beautiful. And you'll start having so much beautiful relationship with God that you say what? Ilahi man dhal ladhi dhaqa halawata mahabbatika farama min kabadala. 
ومن ذا الذي أنس بقربك فابتغى عنك حولة You will get such immense, profound, deep, crazy amount of love and beauty and meaning that you say, God, who would feel this and want anything else in the world? من ذا الذي ذاق حلاوة محبتك فرام منك بدلا So, we can't force anything on ourselves. As I said, it's all about inner change. We need to change ourselves, look at the world in a different way, feel God's love. That's all I've been trying to say in the past six nights. Once you do that, God will help you. By the way, if you feel broken, if you feel he that healing is difficult, God said himself, Ilahi, Imam Sajjad, La ara likasri ghayruka jabira. I'm broken, I feel broken, and no one but you can heal me, can heal my wounds. So tonight, it's the best night. Take this seriously, focus on inner change, ask God for help, God will take care of you. And inshallah, step by step, we'll go on these stages that Imam Sajjad described for us. I'm so sorry for taking more time than I should have, but inshallah, I really hope that these stages that Imam Sajjad described for us, at least we start to go on their journey. Please recite the salawat.